Hi folks, welcome back to the Village Clockmaker. Uh, I'm James. I have to apologize. It's been some time since I made my last video. Uh, I've been MIA because uh, my cancer came back. So I've been fighting that for about six months now. And it seems that we've got a handle on it again. So uh, I'm through chemo and I'm back to the bench. And um, I hope to continue uh, making more videos uh, as time allows. So um, let's get this one started. Uh, tonight we're going to make this. Uh, it's called a crown wheel. Uh, it goes on an arbor like that. And um, we're going to make it out of this. <laughs> uh, this is a piece of 360 brass. And I've already cut the, the blank down. I cut the back here to three quarters of an inch uh, so that we, I can put it in a collet. Three quarters of an inch is the biggest collet I have. And we'll put it in the lathe and we'll turn this down. Um, in the meantime, I think I found something that uh, I can show you uh, how this works. Um, I found this online. Uh, the website or the, the YouTube is called, his name is Bill Stoddard. And uh, I want to give him credit because I just borrowed this, the only one I could find that showed you how it ran. But you can see how the, uh, how the teeth are vertical and the wheel is actually horizontal. And these other things right here are called pallets. There's one on that side and one on this side. And you can see how they uh, oscillate back and forth. Is that better? So thank you, Bill. Uh, he's got a, a good uh, YouTube, so you might go check him out. It's Bill Stoddard. So, um, I guess we'll go over the lathe and uh, start making some chips. You can see when this is running it's a little bit uh, off center and that's because I did this part in the three jaw um, and I knew it would be off but now we got it in the collet so now when it's done it'll be perfectly concentric so we'll face it off to run it the right direction. I'm using the feed now. all we need is the outside rim because it's going to uh, that's the only part we're going to end up using and we'll take it down to size
So we want to end up with um, one point three eight one in inches, of course. So we'll uh, we've got quite a bit to take off. Take a bigger bite. Okay, we're getting down close. I skipped a lot of it. One, three, eight, two. When I take these, when I use this vernier, I like to lock it. There's a lock up here on the top. And I usually lock, I take the measurement, get it right, and then lock it. 1.407, so we're getting pretty close. And then I can look at the DRO and have a pretty good idea. Let me see, we're going to go take a little more off. I'm going to check it before it goes any further. Very close. Three nine six eight two. We got fourteen fourteen thousandths to go. Five six. We'll leave one more for a spring cut. Three eight one, good enough. Okay, uh, let me. I'm going to face it again, off camera, and then I'll move the camera over so you can see how we set the dent. The, do the inside. I'm going to have to bore it out now. Okay, we've got the outside diameter done here. We need to uh, take the inside down to uh, 146.
we're still not there. A little ways to go. Actually, I'm going, going a little over because it uh, won't hurt to have a little extra on top of those teeth. We can trim off later. Okay, we need to uh, yeah that's perfect the depth is right now we need to get this outer rim just right That is point oh point oh three six. Point oh seven one, so according to the DRO we need and we'll take twenty. Five nine. Four nine. So we'll take another five.
to sneak up on it. three over so we're gonna go with that okay now we have our uh, our part roughed out and the reason we left it on the uh, on the back up here is because this wheel is very hard to hold uh, in the mill when you cut the teeth so by leaving this on here we can just put it in a three-quarter collet and now we'll have all this back up here to make sure that the uh, the teeth are don't bend or move or anything when uh, when we when we run this uh, cutter in uh, this is the cutter that I ground by hand uh, we've I've done so much of this these are all just cutters these are 01 uh, tool steel and they're um, uh, hardened and then annealed. I, I built a little um, oven to get them up to about 21, 22, 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And then uh, actually we'll probably make another, a, another separate video out of that. Uh, and then I put them in the oven, They're actually my wife's oven at 400 degrees for two hours and that uh, that anneals them so they're still pretty hard but they're not as uh, um, what's the word not as brittle as uh, as they would be if they were glass hard uh, when you grind them they're really hard to hold uh, and you need to have Parameters where you're you're flat on the sides and perpendicular to the to the sides So this is dead square this piece here is square and I made this little jig and I put them in here And then when I run them on the it makes it much easier to hold and then when I run this through the the uh, grinder or grind it I know that this is is flat. There's a dead flat right there and this I can set the grinder at five degrees to get the side rake here and so forth. And it just makes it a lot easier to, to hold. Uh, and since they're all this size, uh, they all fit in this, this little, it's nothing but a block of, of uh, brass. Uh, but it works quite well. So at this point, we're ready to uh, go over and start cutting some teeth in this thing. Uh, I'll see you over at the mill. I forgot to point out how we're going to hold this. Uh, this is a fly cutter, and um, you have to have a way to hold it. So I made this arbor, uh, and it's nothing but this is actually W1, but this goes in here, and you set it level, and uh, this goes in the the uh, machine, the mill and um, I'll show you how that works. Okay, I've already cut um, all the teeth. This is a 27 tooth crown wheel. Uh, it's very repetitious, so I just went in and cut them. Now we're gonna go in for a, a skim cut, the final cut, and uh, make sure they're perfect. Let me say one other thing. Uh, when you're cutting this kind of part with a um, fly cutter like this, 
you want to turn that fly cutter up as high RPM as you possibly can because you're instead of having a cutter with 15 or 18 or 20 teeth on it you've got one so you want to cut through that brass as fast as you can and you want to put your uh, brass into it as slowly as you can so you're taking out little tiny tiny bites This is just a cleanup cut, so we may not get a lot out of it, but we're making sure that every single tooth is exactly the same as every other tooth. And you can see it cuts fairly well when you're uh, when you're at high RPM and you go fairly slow. You take small bites. See, we won't bother them all the way around. I think that's enough. One more. So that should be it for this uh, project. Uh, at the end, I will put a uh, still of um, the finished project with after it's been X'd out and uh, polished up and ready to go. So. Uh, Thank you very much for watching and, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.